Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amul Chaktivel, and in this video, we are going to see about one of the coolest feature of Playwright, which basically separates other tools from uh, making Playwright special, is its UI mode and the trace viewer. Um, so we're going to dive deep into why this trace viewer is really helpful um, while we build the test and while we debug a failure. Uh, we're going to dive deep into different parts and components of the trace viewer and what job they do. So it's going to be a very interesting video and very useful video if you're working with Playwright. So let's get started without wasting any more time. So here's a simple test that I have used, uh, created. For example, this goes to open source uh, demo website, uh, enters the username, password, clicks on login button, um, and then it tries to search for a button check that doesn't actually exist in the page. So the test would fail. Uh, we want to understand how we could debug this using trace viewer, right? So um, in order for that, um, what we can do is, um, first we will try to understand the UI mode and then we will go to the trace viewer because UI mode has a lot of components that are same as trace viewer, but we will first try to cover it. So what you can do is, um, you can run the test using playwright uh, test um, and then hyphen hyphen UI. So which means, um, you know, you will get a UI where you could just go ahead and run your test, right? So this is the uh, test folder. And then I have the locator spec, uh, which I want to run, right? So yes. Now it opens an UI for me. Uh, let me uh, zoom it a bit. So now you could see all these things here. Um, so the first thing here on the top is, is where you can see a playwright with um, a option to toggle your color theme. Um, so if you want to go lightweight, you got to do that. And then this reload button basically helps you to um, let's say you make some changes in the code here, right? So let's say you want to make one, two, three. And if you just update this, all the tests here will be uh, updated with the code that you have done here, okay? Code change that you have done here. And um, and then there is this console output, which, which means let's say you have some loggings here, for example, log, um, loaded URL, whatever. Right, you want to see all that. Uh, you could you could also see it here, but then there is also a console output tag which should which which will come here, right? Um, and then if you are let's say working with uh, multiple projects, let's say Chromium, uh, WebKit, and all that, so you could also filter that using uh, you know that. And then let's say if you are running hundred tests, and then you want to filter by past, failed, and skip status, you can also do that. Um, you know, it's pretty simple thing to understand. Now, uh, you can also use tags. Let's say, you know, you could tag your test with, uh, let's say this is your login tag and all that. So you could also uh, tag your test. We will co come to that later, but then you could filter your test based on the name of the test or the tags that the test has belonged to. For example, I say locators, then if you notice the two tests have now become only one test, right? Uh, that's also something that you could do. Um, and then there is also a lot of things here. For, for example, Uh, so there is a, this watch icon, which means it will automatically watch for your um, code changes in the editor, and then it will automatically update the test. I wouldn't recommend this because, um, you know, you could also set it as the test level, or you can also test it at, uh, set it at the uh, entire suite level. But then I don't recommend doing that because, um, you know, even if you make a small change, or you, even when you do a little more typing, it just starts to run the test automatically. Um, but again, yeah, it depends upon you. Um, and then this is, this is where you, you, where it take you to the code, but then I use a different ID. So I don't normally use this, but then you can also use it. Let's try to run the test and see oh, what are the other features that we can get. So let me talk, toggle this output thing. So you can see the tests are getting ran here and then you can see a lot of tabs here. Uh, right. So it's trying to search for the check button here. And it will obviously fail because there isn't one there in the page. So it'll, it'll, it'll check for 30 seconds before it fails. So let me minimize this uh, left hand pan. And you can see on the top, you can see the timelines here. For example, you can see the page dot go to the locator dot click, what is happening and all that you could see. Um, and then it failed here. Um, you can also see the before hooks. For example, uh, we use fixture, page fixture directly. But internally, Playwright will will call these commands: context dot new context, browser dot new context, 
and then um, you know browser context at new page and all that so you can also see what are the different steps being executed how long it took um, for example this go to uh, to this particular page is taking 3.5 seconds um, which is a bit on the higher side um, and then finding this locator is, is taking so much of time because we use a, a lot of uh, you know uh, thing here like input tag below this username and all that which is which is making it very complex and you can also see um, in the in the logs here, uh, for example, this particular locator, it tries to wait for the locator, um, and then it resolves to this particular element. What playwright does in the background, right? If you if it's we are calling scroll into view if needed. So all these things you could see. Okay, it then filled the admin into it. It become you know it it uh, waiting for the element to become uh, visible, enable, and editable so that it can fill all these things. So you could see all these things here, like what is the, uh, for example, this one, uh, it, it it uses uh, all these steps, right? You could see the logs and if something is missing, you could add them, right? Um, and then there is also a failure here, which you can see waiting for get by role of name check is getting failed. You can also see here, uh, it exceeded 30, 30 seconds. Uh, it could not find the element in the meantime, right? And uh, you can also see, uh, let's say there is a locator tab here which you could use to click on this. And let's say I, I go here, I click on this, click on some place there. And it give me what is the place uh, locator that I can use for this element, right? So instead of you recording and doing it, for example, I want to click on this login button, you can also do that, right? And then there is a source tab where you can see uh, what is the code that it is executing and where it is failing. Um, and call is the place where you can see um, how long it took, uh, the what is the exact locator that it took, whether it uses stick mode or not, all the other stuff related to finding the element and how long it took and all that. Um, and log we have already discussed, it's about uh, what is the player doing at the back, back end. For example, um, you know, it does all these things, uh, right? Now, uh, errors, again, you can find why if there are any errors, you can also see console output. For example, this console output is coming from mar logs. Okay, so loaded URL is something that we have published. If there is any browser uh, console output, there will be a different icon here which distinguishes uh, where that particular log is coming from. Right, so it will be much easier for you to um, debug these things. And then there is very important thing that is network tab. What are the different calls that are being made? And if there are so many, let's say if your test is taking two minutes to run, there might be so many calls. Right, you could you could state you could filter or sort them based on the status duration. So for example, I want to sort them by the duration to understand which one is taking longer time. So I could action on them. Right. So for uh, so for example, this is taking two point five seconds and it also consumes one point five megabytes of memory. So all these things you could play around. But then there is also cooler stuff. For example, I want to know um, the network calls that happen between this period to this period. So you can you can filter only that particular network talks, okay? And uh, you could also reduce it, right? You can you can see that happening. Okay? Uh, you can see all these things. So for example, during this period, there is no network call, so we are not seeing anything. So here it is trying to load the photo. Um, what is the request that uh, it did? What is the response? What is the response body? It got? And all that stuff is, is, is recorded here. Um, Good. And, and one more thing is um, there is something called as uh, metadata where you could see um, what is the start time or how long the test took, um, what is the platform, what is the viewport and all that, so how many actions that you have executed and all that. And then the cool part here is, for example, this login button, okay, there is three things here, action before and after, which means while performing the action, what happens? So if you notice there is a red color dot here, which indicates um, the playwright tries to click on the center of the element here. And uh, before clicking on it, it looks like this. It found the element. And after clicking on it, what happens? The, it, it goes to the next page, so the page looks like this. So you can see before the event, after the event, and when the action is happening, the click action is happening. right? So you could, you could do all that stuff. An example, for example, you want to inspect this page, you can you know go ahead and do like this. But then you could also pop this out into a separate window and then you can go ahead and inspect it as you, as, as you like, right? You can go ahead, you can um, 
let's say change something here for example you could change um, this is the button here right so this is the button you can go ahead and change uh, even the text you can go ahead and change right you can change all these things and, and see how it looks right so you can do all that you can also edit the um, background color uh, you know other css you can also change the uh, size of the button for example i want to change it to a smaller pixel you could do all that stuff and then play around with it right that's the cool part about pop, uh, you know popping this out so th it has a lot of things once in the timeline you can see what are the different events uh, that happened uh, what are the network logs uh, what is the source code that's used what are the different calls being made what are the play rate logs uh, and this attachment tab is is for visual uh, uh, you know um, testing for example you could com compare images using playwright we could co cover that in the later part of the video but then um, you know this might be handy during that time right where you can have a base image and then the uh, your actual image you could combine them and see what are the difference between these two things right so that's how it is so this is all about the ui mode and most of the things that you see here is also part of uh, the uh, the trace viewer as well so let's let's close all this thing and then and then i want to uh, you know um, run the test not in the ua mode now but then uh, you know you could also run it in headed mode and then hyphen hyphen trace is on so what it tells is hey try to run the test i want to see the execution but apart from that uh, i want to record the trace for this particular test because i i know this is failing so i want to make sure um, you know i have the trace so that i could debug it right so let's it will first run the test And it will wait for 30 seconds before it fails. And by default, the trace will be recorded on first to retry. So if there is if there is a failure, you could configure your playwright to re retry those tests. For example, here, if it is a CI, it will retry a couple of times. If it is local, it will it will it will not retry anything at all. So that's why we are not seeing a uh, trace viewer by default. So here, if you notice apart from the report that we see here why it failed and all that you can also see the trace here right and you can click on this and again it it, it takes you back to the same window that we see before so you have the timeline where you could go and filter to a rest particular area and then you could also see what is the errors network tabs and all that so all the things that you see in the ui ui mode is here again you could um you can play around with it like how, how the way you want right so this is super helpful, this trace viewer. But then there is also one more thing that you could uh, do with uh, trace viewer. Let's say you are you are running your test in CI and you generated the uh, you know report like this. It will have traces like this. But then when you click on it, it will not uh, you know uh, open the trace viewer window for you because uh, all the necessary information will not be there, right? Because since the test ran now here. You could you could click on this and then it will navigate you here. But then, uh, in in if you run the test on CA, it won't it will not have the, all those information. So in those cases, what you could do is you could just click on downloading download this trace, and then there is a trace. I think it's trace dot dot dev whatever something like that. Playwright dot dev whatever. Yeah, so trace.playwright.dev, it, it is asking me to uh, drop a, a trace file. So I can click on this and download it. And then you can select files, um, trace.zip, and then you can open it. Now this way, you could see what is the execution that happened and all that, right? So you can you can hover your mouse and see how the execution been done, what is the failure and all that. So so this is, this is super useful if you are trying to, uh, you know, debug a test that failed in CA, right? That's all about the trace viewer. Uh, I hope this video is useful, but then there is also one more thing that you could do instead of uh, passing the hyphen hyphen um, trace on, you could also configure it here. So there are different ways you could configure on of, you want to get the trace if it is on the first retry, uh, retry with trace or on all retries, whenever there is a retry, you want to record the trace, uh, retain only on failures. So you could do all of this based upon your requirement. Um, but then uh, for now I keep it off. So.
that's all about it guys i'll see you guys in another great video until then tata bye bye from mumbai